Hey guys, Cynthia Williams with the Lifestyle Nutrition Program and the Lift Program. So today I wanted to come on and talk about uh, fasting um, and who fasting is appropriate for, what it's good for, why you should maybe incorporate it and why you should maybe not incorporate it into your health plan. So intermittent fasting or fasting, not intermittent, but fasting in of itself is something that has been around for centuries. If you go back and you look across almost every religion at some point in some way, they incorporate fasting and it was not for weight loss. They incorporated fasting for health reasons and that's where that is what health, uh, fasting is intended for and to help with is the the research shows that it helps with healing the insides basically. Um, so you'll hear a lot of people saying, you know, oh I'm doing this fasting program and it's helped me to lose weight. What it's done is it's helped you reduce the amount of calories that you intake. It's not the fasting that causes the weight loss because it's always calories in versus calories out when it comes to weight loss. You have to create an energy gap between the amount of food that you're consuming and the amount of food that you're burning off. So if doing some kind of fasting regimen, whether it's a 16-8 or um, a 5-2, whatever it may be, it, if it's helping you to reduce the amount of calories that you're taking in on a daily basis, then it would help you with your weight loss. My issue and a lot of the issues of um, health um, and wellness coaches um, or trainers, those that um, ha have been studying this, I guess, or dealt with it or dealt with a lot of clients that have dealt with it, is if you don't have a good relationship with food to begin with, you should not be fasting. Because the fasting cycle, typically in most, uh, most times, it creates a restrict binge cycle. Um, so it's very unhealthy mentally for someone. So what they'll do is they'll restrict, they'll restrict, they'll restrict, and then they get to their eating window and they binge. And then they overconsume food. Um, so those are the people that you'll see that are doing maybe the intermittent fasting, but they're not losing weight. And they're not losing weight because they're still in a calorie surplus because when they get to their eating window, they are overeating. So I do not recommend fasting for anybody that has any kind of issue with food as the fasting can exacerbate or make that issue even worse. Um, so that, yeah, so just avoid it if... <laughs> Um, if you know, and you know yourself, if you have issues when it comes to food, um, you've diet cycled, you've tried every fad diet that's out there, you're looking for the quick fixes. If that's you, fasting is not for you. It's not for you. It's just going to um, deepen uh, um, those issues with food and you're not going to get the results that you um, are looking for. They're not going to be long term or sustainable because you're not coming at it in a good, healthy mental state. Um, Fasting, I will use fasting with clients um, that uh, have gut issues when they first start. So every client that I work with when we come or we start the program, first and foremost, it's getting healthy. Um, it's regulating um, their systems, getting their energy up, teaching them how to uh, pick whole foods versus processed foods. Um, my number one thing is going to the bathroom. If they're not going to the bathroom every single day, we address that because you should be um, going to the bathroom every day. You should be excreting your food. That is your body's way of detoxing and cleansing itself, um, which brings me, you know, all these detoxes and cleanses are all marketing ploys and propaganda. Um, and that's another talk I can do because your body is a well-oiled machine and designed to cleanse and detox itself. And the ways that we do that are going to the bathroom. One of the ways, sweating is another way, different things like that. Um, so if I have a client that maybe is only going to the bathroom twice a week, we address that first and foremost. And so we'll try a few different things and uh, fasting might be one of the tools that I'll pull in. And the reason for that is when we fast or we go an extended period of time without eating, then our body can focus on and kind of do the house cleaning on the inside. It can focus on other things 
um, inside of the body to help it regulate itself and get things back to where they need to be without worrying about breaking down food. Because when we eat, that is our body's primary focus at that time is to take that food that we're eating, break it down in the appropriate components and get it cycled or shifted or delivered to the different parts of the body that need those calories or fats or proteins or carbs or whatever it may be. So if we go a period of time without eating, our body can do other processes, which part of that is trying to heal the gut. Um, so for simplify, this is the simplest way to do it, is it kind of puts your gut to sleep when you don't eat. And we go extend a period of time, it allows your body to break down bad proteins or whatever it is that it's doing um, inside of there. And then um, when we eat, again, we stimulate the digestive tract to move and hopefully we push through foods that have been sitting in the digestive tract for some time and we try to clean it out of sorts. So that is how I will use fasting. Um, I, on the other side, if I have a client who eats um, who does not have any kind of, show any kind of signs of restricting or binging with their food patterns. Um, maybe a, a client that is um, uh, training for a competition or ex-client that's trained for a competition or somebody that eats, you know, five to six meals um, every day and they're eating those five to six meals every day of good whole foods because they're worried about losing muscle mass. They're, you know, if they don't eat every two to three hours, they're freaking out that their body's starting to pull the muscle mass and the, the protein from their body and they're gonna lose muscle mass. So I would use intermittent fasting kind of for them to try and break some of those mental patterns. So they're kind of the other opposite side of the spectrum from somebody who restricts and binges. Um, so to show them, hey man, a fast here and there, you're not gonna lose any muscle mass. Um, you're gonna be just fine and you know, so we do that kind of stuff to break it break those mental patterns on that side. So that's personally, typically, the two most common ways that I will use fasting. One, to help with gut health. Two, to help somebody on the, you know, this side of the spectrum who is eating all the time um, and they're already eating good foods and whole foods and things like that in fear of losing muscle mass. Um, so we'll, we'll do it um, on that side of things. Um, but fasting, if you go back and you actually look it up, study it a little bit, like I said, it's for health purposes and that's what it was derived from, from, you know, our ancient ancestors. Um, they would do it to, um, you could see if somebody got sick, they would fast. Um, and that would allow them to let their body heal itself. Like I said, if we're not eating food, then your body can do some um, housekeeping on the inside and try and fight off that virus, that bug, that bacteria, whatever it may be that we have on the inside. Um, the body will attack those cells and kill those cells out. Um, the other thing that is shown is an extended fast, like a 24 hour fast or a 36 hour fast, has shown to improve or reduce cancer. Um, chances or likelihood. Um, so, but you do not have to do that regularly. Like one 24 to 36 hour fast per month, every 30 days has shown to be beneficial in that aspect. Um, so if you're fasting, you know, 24 hours a day, a couple times a week, and you're a female, you really need to think, rethink that because that can have negative effects on your hormones and the research out there if you just look for it. Um, so especially women versus men, uh, extended fasts definitely have effects on hormones, um, your estrogen, progesterone levels. Uh, so you really wanna be careful with that. Um, so yeah, so if you just, you know, fasting is meant for health. Um, if you're doing it for health purposes, to feel better, um, to let your body kind of clean itself up, uh, reasons like that, absolutely. Just do your research first, f figure out which one is best for you, how often you should be doing that. Like I said, a, a 24 to 36 hour fast should not be more than every 30 days um, that you can do. If you're doing like the 16-8, which is the most common, which is a 16 hour fasting window followed by an eight hour eating window, um, just, you know, if that works for you and you have a good relationship with food, absolutely go for it. But you still, it's still in your eight hour window, you still have to be eating less calories than what you're burning off for the day. Just because your window is shortened does not mean you can eat whatever you want whenever you want. It doesn't work that way. It's always calories in versus calories out. So, 
I hope this is helpful. I hope it clears up a little bit about it, or I hope it at least stimulates you to go out and research it more and not just do something because you think it's the next fast fad diet or your girlfriend over here got good results from it. Again, you need to go back and look at it or think about it. If she lost weight, it's because her calories consumed were less than the ones that she was burning off. It is not the fasting. So you could achieve those same results just by eating less and not having the, um, the fasting in the eight hour eating window. So. Food for thought, guys.